Good day grade 11s. Welcome to the third lesson in week 16. In this lesson we're learning about, still learning about ideal gases and thermal properties. Now in the last lesson we learned about Boyle's law and in this lesson we're going to learn about Gay-Lussac's law. So let's join again the Mindset Learn team as they explain this to us. <laughs> Hello grade 11s, welcome to this lesson on the effect of temperature on a gas's pressure. In another lesson, we observed a practical about this topic. Now we focus on the concepts involved and answer the questions raised in that lesson. Let's remind ourselves what these were. First, let's remind ourselves of the focus question they tried to answer. How does the temperature of a gas affect its pressure? So they changed the temperature of a trapped gas, they recorded each temperature, and they measured the pressure of the gas for each temperature. They kept the volume and amount of gas they used constant by the use of an enclosed jolly bulb. They plotted their results in a graph, which was a straight line. This suggests that pressure is directly proportional to temperature but their graph line didn't cut the origin, so the relationship between pressure and temperature for the units used can't be direct proportion. The learners extended their graph to find the temperature which would cause a pressure of zero, according to their data. They found this to be about 270 degrees Celsius. A key to be able to answer these questions is the unit we use for temperature. Let's join Nelly as she explains. A man by the name of Lord Kelvin realized that it was rather silly to take zero on a temperature scale as the freezing point of water, as Celsius does, when there are clearly things that can be colder and thus measure below zero degrees Celsius. He suggested that one should find the temperature at which nothing could get colder and take that as the absolute zero for a new temperature scale. Experiments have shown this temperature to be minus 273 degrees Celsius. Because all the Kelvin scale does is move the zero position 273 places to the left, you simply have to add 273 to your Celsius reading if you want to convert to a temperature reading in Kelvin. As soon as you do that, you will find that the graph of pressure against temperature in Kelvin now gives you a straight line graph that passes through the origin. So pressure is directly proportional to temperature, but only if temperature is measured in Kelvin. Let's look at this more closely. This is the learner's data. We can see a direct relationship between these two variables. As one increases, so does the other. Can you explain why an increase in temperature increases pressure? Refer to kinetic theory. Remember that the temperature of a gas is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules of the gas. That means that as the temperature of a gas rises, its molecules, on average, move faster and faster. Remember that the molecules don't all have the same speeds. Some move quicker and some slower. However, the molecules of a hotter gas move faster on average than a cooler gas, and so have a higher average kinetic energy, and so a higher temperature. Let's use this simulation of a trapped gas to observe this. We will move the slider to heat the gas. The increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy of the molecules. Notice how they move around faster and faster on average as we heated the gas. Notice how the thermometer's measurement rises. This shows that there is an increase in temperature. Remember that the gas pressure is related to the rate at which the molecules collide with the walls of the container. Let's watch the simulation again. 
Notice that as the particles move faster and faster, they collide with the sides of their container more and more. Let's watch the simulation one last time. This time, let's include the Kelvin temperature measurement and the pressure gauge in our view of the simulation. Notice that as the temperature measurement increases, the pressure we read on the gauge also increases. So, as temperature increases, pressure increases. But we already know that pressure is not directly proportional to degrees Celsius temperature. But now let's convert our temperature values into the unit Kelvin. This is the equation for the conversion from Celsius to Kelvin. So we add 273 in each case. Now let's check for direct proportion between temperature in Kelvin and pressure. Let's compare lines 2 and 3. 288 times what gives 304? 1,05. 1, 1, 1 times what equals 1, 1, 6. 1, 0, 4. This is not exactly the same as the factor by which Kelvin temperature was increased. Why not? Mr. Mashapa's learners collected this data with real equipment, not from a simulation. So we should expect some experimental error. Let's ignore the slight difference here as experimental error. Kelvin temperature increase causes a pressure increase by the same factor. Why is this? Why would a double in Kelvin temperature double the pressure, but not a double of degree Celsius temperature? Nelly has told us that the Celsius scale uses a zero value which is not the lowest temperature possible. Zero degree Celsius is the melting point of water. In other words, the temperature at which ice begins to change to liquid water. This simulation shows water molecules at zero degrees Celsius. Notice that the molecules do move. They do have kinetic energy. 20 degrees Celsius is not double as hot as 10 degrees Celsius. At zero Kelvin, the gas molecules do not move at all. They have zero kinetic energy. That's why zero Kelvin is called absolute zero. A gas at 20 Kelvin is double as hot as a gas at 10 Kelvin. Its kinetic energy is double as much. It shouldn't surprise us that a gas at absolute zero exerts zero pressure. The molecules do not move at all, so they can't heat the sides at all. Let's use some ideal data which has no experimental error in it so that we can see patterns in the data more easily. Here is all our ideal data. It would be nice to solve these questions with an equation. Let's look at the pattern in the data and get an equation from this. We ignore the data for degrees Celsius temperature. Let's now calculate pressure divided by temperature for each line. We find a constant. We can call this constant K. We can call this P1 and its associated Kelvin temperature T1. P1 over T1 equals K. We can call this P2 and its associated Kelvin temperature T2. P2 over T2 also equals K. Since both of these equal the same thing, they must equal one another. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So let's try a question and solve it with this equation. An enclosed mass of gas has a pressure of 1,21 kilopascals when its temperature is 353 Kelvin. What would its volume be at a temperature of 373 Kelvin? We call the data set we know fully T1 and P1 and the data set with the unknown T2 and P2. We substitute values into the equation. We cross multiply. 353 times P2 equals 1,21 times 375. We divide both sides of the equation by 353 and solve. We know that the answer's unit must be kilopascals because P1's unit is kilopascals. 
In this equation, P1 and P2 must always have the same unit as one another, and T1 and T2 must always be in Kelvin. Notice that this answer is the same as the one in the table. Let's go back to the real data Mr. Mashapa's learners got. Remember that when we looked at the patterns in the data, we saw that there was some experimental error. Another way to see this is to calculate P over T for their data. The answers are similar but not identical for the different states. A bit of experimental error is normal in real data. Now remember, we started with a focus question which we must still answer. The question was, how does the temperature of a gas affect its pressure? We've seen that the answer is, the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. This is sometimes called Gay-Lussac's law. We write this mathematically like this. Pressure is directly proportional to temperature. To end, let's apply this conclusion to answer a question from Mr. Mashapa. From Boyle's law, we had pressure against volume. Right? That's where we kept temperature as well as the mass constant. Now, the shape of the graph was a hyperbola. This was done at a certain temperature. Now, I want you to think of what would happen if maybe this time we do the very same experiment but at a higher temperature. Tell me, will the hyperbola be below or above this one? You think about that. Have you got the answer already? Yes. Right? Hopolang? I think it will be above. It will be above. So which means we expect something like this. Right. Now, this would imply that now, in this case, we have a lower temperature. And that would be for a higher temperature. But why is this the right answer? Let's ask Nelly to help us with this. You should remember that trapped gas particles exert a force per unit area on a container. You should also know that temperature is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of particles. So, at a particular volume, if you increase the temperature, the number of collisions with the sides of the container will increase, resulting in a higher pressure reading. Thanks, Nelly. And that's all for today. Well, grade 11s, I hope that that helped you learn that Gay-Lussac's law is basically relati relating pressure to temperature. So this time we're keeping the volume constant and we're keeping the number of moles constant. And what we saw was that as the temperature increased, so the pressure increased and vice versa. Please make sure you understand what they were talking about and make sure you could have done those questions that they went through. We will do more videos with using these different laws, um, but make sure you understand it before you move on to the next lesson. Have a great day.